significant American historical events saw tens of thousands of black slaves enter Canada seeking freedom. We continue our month-long series moving through the eras of Canada's black history with Ontario Black History Society President Natasha Henry. Good morning to you, Natasha. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining again. Today we're talking about black loyalists. And for those who are not familiar about the history of black loyalists, please, please do enlighten us here. Black loyalists were um, men and women who served in the British military in some capacity. And in exchange for their service uh, during the American Revolution, they were offered their freedom. And at the end of the American Revolution, when the British lost and Loyalists had to relocate north here into what is now Canada. Over about 3,500 Black Loyalists uh, came into Canada, primarily in the Maritimes and a small number in Ontario. When they did arrive here in Canada, what was their experience like? Their experience um, in many ways transferred from what happened in the United States at the same time that these um, Three blacks were entering into uh, British North America. Uh, enslavement was also ongoing here, and so there were black people who were enslaved here, as well as the enslaved blacks uh, who were brought in by the loyalists uh, were entering at the same time. And so at this time, you have this mix of social statuses of those who were enslaved and those who were free. They did face, um, yes, they were free. They did face some racial discrimination. Um, you know, they were some of the, the last group to receive their land grants. They received less favorable land, um, smaller land grants. They didn't receive a lot of the rations uh, that were also offered to white loyalists. So they, they did have quite a bit of challenging time. Um, but they came together as a community. They developed a large number of communities, many of which are in existence today in places like Nova Scotia, and to help um, to try to improve their situation. Natasha, the name Peter Martin is one that people should be familiar with. Why? This story, the, the stories and the experiences of the Black loyalists are important because it gives us insight into another experience here in Canada, uh, looking again at the complexities of um, enslavement and freedom at, at the time, at the particularly same time that Black people in Canada were experiencing and some of the things that impeded their, um, their lives at the time. Uh, we're just seeing some graphics here, Natasha, some history uh, on, apologies, my earpiece is just cutting out here for just a moment here. Um, learning a little bit more about uh, Peter Martin here brought uh, the Chloe Cooley incident to his attention. Um, th there's a lot, you know, we've been talking a lot about this in history books and, and, and it is sad and, and a lot of people are guilty of saying, like, I haven't heard these names before. And I'm not familiar with these names. And that's why we need to learn more about this. But when we talk about the history as well, it's important to learn about how Canada played that role. And when we talk about the Loyalists, how a lot of people left to Sierra Leone. Why is that? So I think, um, you know, there are several things. I think for us here in Canada, we need to recognize um, that we have our very own deep uh, nuanced history here. Uh, it is connected to the US history and we see from the example with the black loyalists that there are, um, you know, there are connections to American history in terms of, for example, the waves of um, black loyalists, those who were enslaved and then later on with the Underground Railroad era. Uh, you know, these stories really, uh, if for me, it's important to highlight some of the individuals and their experiences to really educate people and to put a face to, you know, to those experiences. Indeed. Uh, can you tell us about the uh, Shelburne racial attack? And I know this is something that you'd like to highlight today. Sorry, I didn't hear your question. The Shelburne racial attack. I know this is something the you Shelburne, want our viewers yes. to... Yes. So this is that in 1784. This is uh, an example of the experiences of black loyalists. At that time, there, you know, situation, the conditions were quite challenging for all loyalists in terms of resettling here, uh, and particularly so for Black loyalists. They were offered and accepted employment um, for lower wages in comparison to their white counterparts, which did not make 
uh, white veterans happy. And then, so this was kind of simmering uh, for some time. And then there was an incident where a black loyalist by the name of David George, he was a Baptist minister. He was holding meetings and, um, and baptizing people. And he actually was going to baptize a white couple, which led to an uproar. And so this, these two things culminated in um, white loyalists uh, physically attacking Mr. George, as well as going into black communities in Shelburne and ransacking and destroying homes. And this lasted for about 10 days. And this was what was noted as the first uh, racial attack in, in British North America. In I know definitely a lot that we can all learn, and I wish we had more time with you, Natasha, but you are checking in with us weekly, and if you want some more information, you can go to blackhistorysociety.ca. I apologize for some of the technical issues here, Natasha, but we will check in with you again next week, and this is, uh, we're going to be talking next week about uh, Canada's part in the Underground Railroad. I think a lot of more people know about it, but we're going to go in-depth with you as well. Natasha, thank Thanks, you for Mel. your time See today. You next week. All right, we're going to check in now with Devo Brown. He's right over there.